beautiful souls. I hope you're well. Today we have another beautiful lady with us today. Uh, Kristen Stara is here with us. Uh, Kristen has the uh, is a, uh, a fitness professional um, as a profession, but she has had many really interesting and fascinating experiences that uh, she has shared uh, with some of us in the disclosure community. Mm -hmm. uh, I can immediately refer to. Um, Elena Dnan's uh, interviews. She, she, you had both interview, two interviews, I guess, with uh, with uh, with her and also with with Danny and Chris. There was also a beautiful interview with Robert Khalil from uh, from Typical Skeptic, who did an interview quite recently, actually. I think it was a week ago. So a shout out to uh, Robert's beautiful channel and this beautiful interview because uh, I think we should, you know, collaborate and just spread this information out there. And Kristen, in th in these three interviews, you have shared a lot about uh, your experiences with things which would be considered more about disclosure or contacts or missing time, things connected to portals and things like that. Um, and that has been absolutely fascinating information. And perhaps we can talk about that a little bit. But since you have had the opportunity to talk about that uh, in the different um interviews. I was wondering if today perhaps we could talk a bit more about the spiritual journey, you know, what it is to go through these days, the challenges we all go through these days in this sort of, sort of transitional period we're going through. And uh, perhaps it would be really interesting to have your view on that. So first of all, welcome, Kristen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me on your show today. Thank it's you. A real, it's, it's a pleasure. Good. It's an honor to have you. So um, tell us a little bit more about, about you and how is it going for you these days and what's happening in your life right now in terms of good and challenging things in the spiritual journey and any type of topic you'd like to share with us. Mm. Um, it's There's a lot of uh, moving and shaking going on in my life right now and it's not settled. So I am in a really, um, I'll say uncomfortable, not comfortable <laughs> place in my life where I moved back to my hometown in Florida um, and from Colorado first. And then I was in, uh, you know, during the pandemic, I moved a lot because it, I was, I was really going where the work was, but also I wanted to travel. I had the money. I had the time. I was like, I'm going to go to a horse ranch in Northern Arizona and hang out there for the summer. I mean, I was just kind of, I, I think I had a midlife crisis where I was just like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and anyway, but I moved out here. I just followed my heart. I, something was calling me back east. And it was like I needed to go back and sort of put a close to the chapter that I left with my family, of okay. uh, biological family. And we had all known each other from our stories, right? Like, But I hadn't been back for such a long time. And it was, there's been so much change spiritually, emotionally. Like I've grown up. They've grown up. And we still see each other as like what we were in our 20s. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we had to really get with each other real time and suss out like this is who we are now and and not have these, you know, they'll never change, you know, or she'll never change or, you know, all, <laughs> all of those, the BS that we tell each other, which is actually not true. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm kind of, it's been healing, um, but I really got here and I can't, I was coming in hot when I got to Florida. You know what I mean? I didn't realize how battle-worn I was from being, um, I, I was working at a medical facility as a fitness professional, um, working in treatment mm -hmm. for people with chronic pain and things like that. It was a wonderful job, but it was during the time when the jab was a thing, right? And so uh, I chose not to do that. And I had to get a, I was basically under medical tyranny for about six to eight months in that job. And it got to the point where every day I was getting an email, why aren't you vaccinated? You know, um, and it, I didn't realize the the impact that that had on my my psyche yeah. of just constantly being under that threat of mm -hmm. like I could lose my job. They could literally pull me in tomorrow and say bye. You know we don't want you here. So I did everything legally that I could to try to protect myself. But when I left, I just left that job and and, and moved on. But I I'm out here now and and you know it's happening. I'm I'm building a business and um, I'm starting to meet people. The the energy, the vibe here, they didn't get hit as hard as like Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado. The politics were completely different. DeSantis didn't close the state down. It was just uh, so, so I can't even relate. Like when I'm like, you have no idea like how difficult it's been. <laughs> yeah. And everybody here was like, what are you talking about? Like we, we had everything open. We were good. You know, economy's booming, you know, <laughs> so like a complete reality from a completely different state. reality. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but I came in a little hot, you know, I realized like the temperature of my 
being needed to be tamp- tampered down. So I, I've been going to the beach like, you know, three times a day, walking on the beach, getting, you know, that grounding. And the ocean has been an amazing teacher, healer. You know, it's my my first love has just been the ocean. So yeah. I went back to what I knew and but just full circle. And now I'm, I'm like totally changed and, you know, um, realizing like I still have a lot more work to do both both spiritually and um on on the human level there's i want to talk about that i guess there's the wake up that we all go through the wake up of like oh my god i'm not from here oh my god you know there's there's life on other planets and uh whatever we whatever that thing is for you i'm not who i think i am i'm more than i think i am um to growing yourself up so there's the egoic part of ourselves that has to grow up to meet the part of ourselves that we understand a multidimensional self. Right. And it has been such a journey for me. Um, and there's parts of me that I realize I'm like, I'm like 17 right now. I can get, I can go to 17 so fast. Yeah, well, well <laughs> we all do. Embarrassing. <laughs> it's, you. <laughs> it's embarrassing, you know, and I'm like, I know I'm more, I'm 52. Right. But I'm like, God, you know, like, how does this happen? So I'm just being honest. This has been my journey. It's been, that's been the challenge is like, integration of self and soul knowing who i am as a soul knowing who i am as a self are just like and then it's the microcosm of the macrocosm this is the this is humanity right now i'm i am humanity you're humanity <laughs> and we're all just trying to figure it out who we are you know so you, you it's humbling it is. It's, it is. It's super humbling. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's it. You used a beautiful image while we were chatting a little bit before we started um, recording. You used this beautiful visual image, and I'm very visual. You said it's uh, this our spiritual kind of gro- growth and and our and there, our soul kind of state is, is a bit like uh, oil and water. You know, you said it's difficult to make this come together in a harmonious way. So I thought the image was was quite telling, you know, and speaks volumes. So how how are you trying or, you know, what are the challenges at least in this this effort in your part to try to harmonize these two elements in your life? Or where does it where does where is it the the struggle is basically for you? Um sorry, there's a lot of noise outside the, the okay. door. I don't know if you can hear that. I can't nope. do anything about it. So, no, no, sorry. I have noise also behind. Yeah. I hope you can't hear that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> live, on, live near people. Um, it is the, the, the challenge, I think, for me is identification, like the identity that we get so attached to. Uh, for me, I've got, I, I, that's what I'm recognizing now in myself. Like, what are the things that I'm so attached to in my identity? I fought for, you know what I mean? Like my sexuality, like, all of these things back in the nineties and the two thousands were, you know, and now we're, we're so neutralized. Everything's just been like, Oh, it's not a big deal or whatever. Well, you know, it used to be a thing when I, if my partner was in the hospital, I wouldn't be able to go see them because I'm not family, you know, just simple things like that. Couldn't serve in the military. You could lose your job. There were all these things that we fought for and people think, you know, now, now we have this wokeism, which I don't agree with, but, but it's, it's being confused and all, all this stuff. And now my, my, if I identify as, as my soul and just the observer looking at that, um, none, none of it, um, it doesn't, it's not as important, but I'm still attached to it. You know what I mean? And so when I'm meeting people for the first time, I don't know how, I don't know how to put this into words. It's, it gets complicated, but I don't know where I fit now. Yeah. Wow. Did you hear that? That's lightning. That's thunder. We have a storm. That's no, I didn't hear it, but okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, awesome. Good timing. So this, this, we may get cut off on this interview. Um, Let's see how this goes. We'll manage. Don't worry. It's It's literally right. It's not live anyway. So there's no problem. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) We can, we can edit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if that made any sense, but it feels like it's the identification uh, letting go of the, the the attachment to the identity and just being the observer of my own um, faux pas, my humanness, you know, all of that stuff that we do throughout our day. We get, you know, just getting irritated mm-hmm. at things we don't really need to get irritated at. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. just like... <laughs> 
you you mentioned you you got back closer to family uh mm -hmm. is that it, how, how do you find challenges or perhaps no challenges i don't know uh regarding getting back closer to your family and feeling that perhaps you have grown in the last few years regarding your consciousness or whatever how is that going for you in terms of you know connecting with close ones who are who are or maybe not be on the same yeah. wavelength it is a frequency issue you know more than anything I, <laughs> did you hear that no nope. <laughs> still can't hear it so it's okay don't worry <laughs> Woo, that was close okay uh Just, um, yeah, the, the, sorry, that was really distracting. Okay. Your question was, what is with family? What, what are my issues? How, my yeah, because I know a lot of people right now yeah. are, you know, experiencing these moments when there's a little yeah. bit of a, a wavelength kind of discrepancy between where you're at and, you know, it's not to compare, but it's just, you know, sometimes we, we mm -hmm. don't feel we're on the same length, wavelength with family. How are you handling that? How, how is that for you? That has been that has been challenging too. Um, yeah. I found with my aunt and like with my mom. I mean, I can have these conversations. I just this year came out about my story about what happened in Maui and um, the whole whole thing. Just just spilled the beans. I I sent them the interview. I'm like, now now it's really up to them. Deal can, with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I can't not be what where I'm at right now, and so. If they want to know me as I am now, then they're they're going to have to deal with that, you know. So actually, um, what happened was my mom came. My mom came out about um, a story. You know, she saw some orbs like not long ago uh, when she was living in Colorado, and she's like, "I never told you that." And I was like, "No, you didn't." And so, mm. and then my aunt came out about a story of a sighting she saw. So see what I mean? Like these yeah. things don't even come up until you start. Taught, asking the questions or sharing yourself and then all of a sudden it's like hey I've had the same experience I'm like well, why you never told me that <laughs> so that's they believe they understand so that part's easy mm -hmm. the hard part has been in the consciousness of like what's the on-ramp where where do you have those types of conversations about a soul if they only know you as they know themselves that's that's the problem so if they haven't done the deeper digging or the questions of you know living in a fixed mindset you know, copacetic, everything's good as long as it stays the same, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. The minute that, that it gets weird, then that we, we, we can't talk about stuff like that. We, we can't uh, meet on that level. And that's been the challenge. I, I can't talk on deeper levels with them about the starseed envoy stuff. Yeah. It comes off as condescending. That's, I think, really what it, they're like, well, you just think you're better. No. I don't. It doesn't mean that. It just means I don't feel like I'm from here. You know, that's all that means. And it's it's not an insult to to my biology or where I grew up or any of that. It's just that this is they can't relate to it. So what do you do with that? You just move on. You know? <laughs> it's very interesting. What Talk you about say something about, else. Yeah. yeah. What you say about the the, the whole starseed thing. But it's also a term, and, and we don't like. Yeah. You know, I'm not a super fan, although, you know, my channel is full of starseed words and things because, you know, that's kind of what we are. But in a way, I'm not crazy about um, labels and things. But, you know, I've I've realized also with family how this whole question of starseed makes people uncomfortable because it it is as if we were thinking we were better, which I never felt that way. I, I actually felt, you know, I was just weirdly different, not better. You know, so in a way, it, I think it's there's a misunderstanding there, and that also creates that division thing that's really going on right now, which I really don't appreciate. And it's it it's difficult also for people to understand that it's just like a diversity of being. It's not about being better, and it's tough mm -hmm. to get that point kind of you know through without creating um, problems division. with people. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, it has been. So we don't talk about that. We just yeah. kind of skip over that part. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. But yeah, um, well, I guess we're all that's we're been all... the challenge has been uh, the, 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 the language, um, the frequency matching. And, um, yeah. is, you know, we can start talk about news, weather and sports, we can stay in that realm. Um, We can talk a little bit about UAP stuff because it's been in the news, right? Um, but it's on such a, a surface level, you know what I mean? Based on what we all know about what's going on. It's just like, again, yeah. the on-ramp. How, how do you have that conversation? Other, 
then you know if you start talking about uh, the Galactic Federation or you start talking about other stuff, it's it's overwhelming, and then they just shut down. So it's I don't I don't want to inundate them with too much information until they're ready. They you know, I just tell them where they can go to find it. Yeah, and how how what's your position in terms of of, of your family then when when you realize that it's not that same wavelength how how do you manage to work out the everyday conversations and things like how do you position yourself in order for it to be as harmonious as possible like on an everyday very tangible way how does that happen for you um humor <laughs> using some humor <laughs> Just like, you know, we, we, we're, we're, we're still human, you know, and when they call me out on stuff or I'm, I'm, we're always bantering or whatever. Yeah. Just, yeah. You're right. You know, I am like that. Or um, but the, the funny thing is, is like my aunt who uh, just this is a good example. So like food, like so I'm really big into you know organic and and she's from the 50s. So everything is chemicalized and that's like the start, the advent of chemical farming. Right. And so why would you eat, you know, more expensive food? Why would you want this? And I'm like, she thinks I'm like some kind of snob or whatever. Cause I came from Boulder, Colorado, whatever, you know, like some crunchy granola person. <laughs> it's just like, it's not cause I want to live forever. It's not cause I want to, you know, I want to be a health nut. I'm doing it because I, this is what I have control over what goes in. And if I can eliminate a hundred to 300 chemicals in my, what I put on my skin to what I put in my body. Hey, you know, that's more than my immune system doesn't have to work out my liver. Right. Yeah. And it's, 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 so if something does happen and comes along, it doesn't kill me. Right. Yeah. Cause we live in a weaponized biodome. If you haven't noticed, like that's, that's my response to that. She's like, you're just being, so we kind of banter about that a little bit. You know, it's not a point of argument. It's just different. We, we respect each other's differences. That's okay. It's about trying to serve sovereignty. All, yeah, trying to serve all this while, while keeping your 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 freedom of doing things the way you believe in. Um, all right. Would you would you tell us a little bit more? Just just a little mention about your experiences you've had in terms of things that are a bit out there, as they say. Um galactic yeah. contacts or any type of things that happen to you. If you wish to talk about it a little bit more, if that's something you'd like to share with us. Well, like you said, I mean, um, I did that first interview with Elena uh, yeah. on what happened to me in 2006 I, on Maui. Um, had a just, yeah, it was supposed to be a vacation and ended up turning into uh, me going to another planet. Basically, I stepped through what felt like a portal or went out. I got a flash in a, in a missing time moment. Those are two separate inc incidences on the same day. But yeah. uh, one I remembered and one I didn't. And the first one was uh, uh, just walking on across the lava field when I got there and came out of my body. Um, it felt what felt like I, I left. And when I got back to the other side, I was standing on another planet, saw a blue star. Um, and there was water. It was definitely a planet. It was it was a physical place. But I felt like I was in a different body. I wasn't in my physical body when I was there. Um, but it was very, it felt very physical while I was there. I could smell and um, feel the ground under me. Um, the visual was very real, uh, tangible. So, and then kind of like that picture you have behind you a little bit. Well, uh, when I saw it, it <laughs> without, inspired without me. Two, without two. It, uh, yeah, it's yeah. probably just one. It's just that when I saw the sea and that woman standing close, I don't know, it, it reminded me of your story. So I thought, I'll put that on. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it was a little bit like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was a blue, a blue star. star, though. It was different, mm -hmm. but it was just a kind of the spirit of it. It, it felt like a, it looked like it was the sun was set. You know, that star was setting because okay. it was a very, uh, I don't know, evening time look to it. It mm -hmm. wasn't uh, a blue. It wasn't like a, a, a night sky like we would see. It was just it was very hazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but and then came back and then ended up. Um, that That's a whole other thing. But I knew when I got back that that was my home. I knew I had lived there or I just knew it. Um, so then when it, when I got up, uh, I went in the ocean and you can hear all the story on Elena's channel, but I don't want to retell the whole thing again, but I went in the water and, and that process of going in the water was also strange because the waves were crashing super hard and then it just stopped and settled out and started uh, 
just it just stopped you know what I mean which doesn't happen and then I but then I when I kicked out for about a minute I, I went out and uh I it was like blacking out I, I don't have any recollection and then woke up I had a watch on and it was two two hours and 15 minutes later and I'm way out in deep water and don't remember what happened to me it was just a strange thing that happened um but I had, but the feelings, the feeling memories came back later, and I started realizing emotionally, I had, I, I went somewhere yeah. during that time, whether it was, you know, through consciousness or I was taken, or I, I mean, that's what I'm trying to suss out now is figure out what happened to me in that two hours and fifteen minutes. And how how are you trying to get these memories back? Do you have a particular protocol? Are you just meditating? Are you meditating. seeing someone? What what's your way of trying to making sense of it? I thought about doing a QHHC session, but part of that right now is not feasible. But the other part is that I just need to, uh, I, I through going taking myself back in meditation um, without a lot of um, this problem is it was so long ago. I mean, that's the other thing is like trying to remember, but just going by the physical memories, I mean, I think, you know, and and then the feeling of it and trying to put myself back in the feeling of what happened uh, when the, like the moment I got back, you know, and start from there and then work, try to work my way back. Maybe there's something there, but again, I was telling Elaine, it's like, how do you know the difference between your imaginative imagination and your actual memory? And this oh, is where many people say and QHHT is also something I've heard a lot in QHHT is that imagination is, is, you know, we've been told that imagination is, is BS, but I mean, our imagination is actual intuition and it's actually, mm-hmm. it's vision, you know, so it's a vision for somewhere else. So, I mean, it makes complete sense. It's just that, you know, we've been trained so much to use our intuition as to see our imagination as, oh, this is what kids do, you know, imagination or whatever, or you know artists do because it's but it has nothing to do with reality and that's kind of the the wrong thinking is that you know our imagination is 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 not our intuition which i think is pretty much the same but did did you feel your experience when you were on that planet was um do, do you have an impression that it was like a multi-dimensional part of yourself that was kind of in parallel living in two different places or how how do you kind of make sense of that or that that's something that is a mystery to me i feel like i have lived there and maybe it was that i was seeing through my eyes mm-hmm. <laughs> you know uh, looking out in that moment and we just had a moment of you know connection by location of yeah. of consciousness of soul where we were connecting on that level um i don't know because it wouldn't have happened any other way i don't know if you don't have a connection to something how can you get there yeah. how do you just unless you have technology i don't know how you do that yeah it's um, a quantum resonance thing that yeah right brings you there but did in you... terms of living there i think i did i um but it was in the future and that was the weird thing about it i know and, and i didn't even know this until i knew it elena had talked about it i've heard other people talk about the the future selves uh i think carolyn Corey was another one she she's like in my future past life and i started laughing i was like <laughs> Exactly. It's like mind blowing, you know. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> yeah. In my future past life, I was, uh, you know, I had. You have to think about that for a minute, but yeah, it's simul. It could be simultaneous, and I think it is. You know, mm-hmm. maybe I'm, or was I? Did I freeze my body and you know jump out and go into a body here? Maybe. Mm-hmm. It could have been something like that. Um, I don't know how those things work. Again, that's not my my forte, but it's nice to contemplate it and figure out like. Whatever it is, I just know that there it's it was real for me. You know, it was real from the felt sense of it, but also it was like gnosis. It was a remembering. It wasn't um there's a difference between learning something, like learning the guitar took forever because I didn't play the guitar prior to this. I didn't have lifetimes of playing the guitar, right? I could just pull on that memory. Um, but with other stuff, it's remembering. And you're pulling that from something, from your Akash, whatever you want to call it, or or your soul. And then you've got your DNA. You've got the level of DNA to pull from too down here. So it's it's complex. It's not one thing. Um, Definitely complex. So it feels, you, it feels like, yeah. 
do you feel that when you were standing in that in that place in the beautiful place were you able to kind of look at you know sometimes in QHHC they make you look at your feet and you know like uh, what do you see like do you see fins or do you see colors mm -hmm. or whatever it, is that something an exercise you, you you tried to do to see like what were you looking like or um when I was which one are you referring to uh, when you were like standing on yeah. the the planet you were seeing that kind of sunset on that planet is it did you have like a the, the reflex of trying to see yourself or to look at yourself see what was that yeah elena asked me that question too and i didn't have an answer because i don't i didn't have my consciousness okay. here mm -hmm. i had my consciousness out here i was yeah. literally just blown away with what i was looking at mm -hmm. that there was it's like standing on the edge of the grand canyon you're not thinking about your hands of course <laughs> you're not thinking about right. your feet you're just looking out and what you're seeing you're just it's like, just wow. so like, it's so yeah. vast and so yeah. different than what you're used to and that was the feeling i got was just so it was hard to answer that question i was like damn yeah. why did i do that you know like i could have looked at what what form were you in were you in a physical mm -hmm. body were you a light like were you just consciousness i didn't think about that when I was there, you know, I could have looked behind me. There could have been a whole bunch of city, like city lights behind me. There could have been whole things yeah. I missed because I was just awestruck. And pulled that. You didn't really miss it in the sense that if you do go back into hypnosis or any other form of, you know, if you go within and you, you try to have these visions again, it's probable that you might be able to come back to it. I mean, a lot of people in QHHD are actually able to go back to things they haven't seen when they actually had the moment, but then when they're, you know, going back to it, they're with their contact with their higher self, they're actually able to get more info. So you never know, you you might, you know, it's in the future. Yeah, that, that yeah. could be, that could, it could be. be. Um, and I was wondering, what's your feeling or relationship towards this experience in terms of, has it brought, as it does often for many starseed, a feeling of homesickness or a feeling of longing or is it something that you're actually able to transmute and just say like I'm here now I'm on terra I'm doing my thing and this is what I'm doing here and what's your relationship towards that yeah it, it's changed I think in the beginning it was very much what you just described which was a longing you know for home it, to, so much so that it it blocked out like, like the life here that I was living from seven oh seven till probably about oh eight until I met my teacher Alma, I I didn't. None of it made any sense anymore. You know what I mean? Like, what am I doing here? And the the information that came back for me, I couldn't put it here. I, it didn't make any sense. I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? How am I supposed to integrate this? What does this mean now? Like, I I didn't have any answers, and I didn't have like I said the Dolores Cannons. There, were, there was nobody out back then on the scene to try to describe or explain this phenomenon to me so um i just put it away for a while until i could deal with it later and then the sighting i had in 17 started that search all over again it was really like well maybe you want to look here for your answers of what happened in 07 you know because yeah this seemed to be related in the feeling when they i something shifted in 2017 i don't know if you felt that or since that but it was like they're here They're, they're like, it felt the feeling I had standing on that planet. It was on earth. Now I, it was something anchoring that feeling was on earth again. And I was like, I haven't felt this since that time. And that feeling of wanting to go home was like, I don't need to, because it's here. Like it's now here. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think it's different for everybody because everybody goes through their inner journey at <clears throat> time period. So I guess, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I do, definitely do feel that we, we we don't really need to be so homes homesick anymore because this whole multidimensional aspect is just getting closer to us and we are getting closer to it also through our inner journeys and, and, and our frequency rising. So I think it's, but I mean, we all have our challenges still about being here and, you know, what's my mission oh, here yeah. and how come I'm not there <laughs> and I miss him or her or whatever, you know, we, I, I guess we all go through that as part of the deal. Um, but um, so in terms of, of your life here on Terra and what you, these experiences have brought to you, but also in, in terms of intu in intuitiveness or intuition about what you feel you're here to do, uh, what, what's, you know, what's your feeling about that? What, what do you feel is your, again, I don't like that word mission or purpose. It's a little bit, you know, but what do you feel is your place here and, and what do you want to bring here on Terra uh, in your life? What, what's your, what do you feel is your mission? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that um, word. But... 
Yeah, I know. Um, it, because people want to turn that into a career or they mm -hmm. want to turn it into some kind of something you can monetize or yeah, that's great. If you can do that, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. If you can get supported in doing that for us, some people it's an avocation. I think in my case it is. Mm -hmm. Um, although, uh, for me, the spiritual component is, it is what I'm doing. You know, I'm helping people, uh, mm -hmm. get back in their bodies and also realizing that you're more than just and maybe it's about a, a, being a systems buster too, in that sense, like I, you know, um, questioning everything, questioning, um, everything right now, um, and talking about it and being, being really open about it. I don't have an answer for that yet. I feel like my mission as it were might start when the systems fall. That might be, that might be the on-ramp for when I, m m my mission comes online. Now I'm just like, okay. Or I'm just here to hold the frequency and the planet. And in the meantime, you know, I don't know. I don't have a, an answer to that. I think it's like I was telling Rob, it's the beingness is just as important as the doingness of anything that you do. So mm -hmm. if you're just doing stuff to just do it and calling it a mission, I mean, that's one thing. But if you're if it's inspired action and you're like, I got to do this, there's and, and nothing's going to stop you from that. That to me is being on mission. Absolutely. And so I, it could, it could very well be, I do, I start a business or I, Hey, talk to this person, do this interview, go over here, do that. You know, that that's how my soul works. It's breadcrumbs. I don't, I don't get the full, you know, <laughs> itinerary. <laughs> I don't time. think any of us <laughs> get a full itinerary. It's just like, you know, well, some people do. They know oh, wow. when they were like five, they were going to be an astronaut and they become an astronaut, you know? Yeah. Me. But I agree with you totally in the sense that like we, we put too much importance on what we do rather than how we are in the state of mind and frequency in which we are. And I mean, so many people, again, labels star seeds are simply here to just shine their light, you know, and they can be whatever job they're doing. Who cares? It's really about just being that kind of presence of light that just brings the frequencies up everywhere. And I think what you've done with uh, when you were in Colorado, I think uh, just saying no to this whole you know, medical system and, and the jab thing. I mean, that was an act of courage and sovereignty, which again, brings, you know, brings a lot out there. So I think that was an important act and, and also an act of being, you know. So, mm -hmm. I mean, again, we have to stop putting these pressures about doing things and having missions. And, you know, uh, <laughs> there's, it's so much about what we are and what frequency on which we we kind of vibrate, you know, it's really not about what we do so much. But I mean, we're all stumbling, trying to find our way and, you know, trying to to find what um, resonates with our heart the most. So I understand that you're perhaps trying to find that as well. In future, we'll probably tell more about. Uh... So you're, you're, um, do you feel like moving still? Or, or do you feel like you're staying where you're at now is the place where you, you want to grow some roots there or you're always be a nomad? <laughs> no, I hope not. I hope not. I lived 19 years in Colorado. I was like, I miss a lot of my peeps like there. And at the same time, uh i'm being called here this is just like that was a soul act it was literally like you're going you know you follow your heart or you're going to be miserable living in tucson you're not going to find what you're looking for there and so you know it's been it's hard you know it's hard starting over i don't care where you go there's no easy way to do it you got to meet new people you got to start you know um getting out there it's not going to come to you right so it takes a lot of effort and um conscious action all the time to to keep doing that and it, and it's exhausting some days it's hot here you know what i mean i'm like i don't want to go out i don't want you know when it's like 107 with the heat index so uh it's easy to just give yourself excuses not to get out and meet people and yeah but uh i've been doing i started a group here um it's it's been kind of off and on we're a little bit off right now but i call it we're, we're it was the et cafe okay. and so we started this little group um in J on jack's beach and we, I met quite a few people and we did a, one CE5, which was fun. We did see some stuff. So at the beach, it was just, it was, um, I'm finding out like where people are at, you know what I mean? And they all did it for different reasons. So, but just trying to meet soul family and, and, and also make connections. So I'm creating stuff as well as going to stuff that's already been out there and created. So, yeah. And then just be a normal person, you know what I mean? Like go dragon boating or 
go, go yeah. paddle boarding and, you know, um, play guitar, you know, fi find meetups, stuff like that to do, not just be this one thing and this one thing only, you know, so it's trying to find that well-roundedness in your life. But yeah, um, I don't know what your question was again. I don't even know if I answered it. Um, no, if you were like a, in the nomadic <laughs> mode or if you're actually trying all to the really stay in, in Florida and, and just, you know, make your life there. But what yeah. was the calling for Florida? I mean, why why just the sudden calling to go back to your roots to Florida? I mean, was there, do you feel it was like an energetic thing, people? What was it that brought you back? Um, like I said earlier, I think it was, it was my, um, I wish I could answer that succinctly. I just, I can't. <laughs> it's a. Uh, I had done a lot of um, inner child work, like in 16 and 17, I ended up going to the meadows in Arizona and I dealt with some codependency and, and all of that stuff that uh, childhood trauma, I mean, like really do like dove in and did some post-induction therapy on that. And it really, I left about 50% of my shame in Arizona. It was great. And then got back on the plane in Colorado and then did about a year of trauma work and, um, so the I I was able to, um, that that I think is what initiated that spiritual awakening for me was doing that work. So getting getting the the BS and the who I thought I was and the opinions of other people and their shame and trauma and all that that was put upon me that had nothing to do with who I was as as a as a person as a soul. Um, it it opened up something to come in and come through me to then create this new experience that I was having, you know, um, activations. I was going through a lot of stuff back in 18. So mm -hmm. it, it all kind of, it was like, a. so this feels like coming back here, um, an amends in a way to myself and also to my family and, and really, um, I, I don't know when we change, they, I, I know that sounds weird, but when we change, they change. It's like, oh, it's not weird. It's true. <laughs> you know it what I mean? It's like, well, it's the transgenerational yeah. thing just mutates when you, you do it the does. inner work. It does. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's the reason, I guess. Um, my heart was calling me to come back East and that's what I did. And, and now I'm here. And if it's it changes, true. then I will be moving again. Yeah, you just follow the the flow, but it's beautiful how you came kind of kind of uh, full circle with this whole healing uh, thing. It's I mean, it's a beautiful, uh, inspiring experience for people who are out there also trying to transmute and heal the inner child stuff. And and you know, there is there is a possibility to finally transmute this. I mean, you're the living experience that it's possible, and actually go back to our roots or you know the the people of origin that were there and that perhaps I'm not saying they were responsible because we're not victims, but you know participated in situations we've gone through and if we're able to make peace with that i mean wow you know mm -hmm. it, it is not only mm -hmm. peace with ourselves but with uh, with these people it's absolutely crucial i think to kind of move on to another aspect of ourselves so um wow that's that's a beautiful inner journey you went through pretty difficult i imagine it must have been challenging yeah, yeah. but it was it was some of the hardest but the most rewarding spiritual work i've ever done um yeah. and i i can't recommend it more highly to people that you know if you are going through that um because i would have gone to my grave with it i just would have been like oh it's just how i am and it, we create a, a personality that was constructed for us so it, it was like someone came along and took a wrecking ball it was like god or source or whatever it was like you know that that foundation that you uh put down there well the the electricity you know the electrical wires are bad and the plumbing's gone bad you got like roots in the pipes and if we're going to demolition that we're just going to basically yeah. clear all of that and we're going to create a foundation that you could build from space you know what i mean like actually build the from the, the from the foundation that's the kind of foundation i needed and this was not gonna it wouldn't have worked it's just it was like running um new software on old hardware you know yeah. like it just wasn't going to be able to read that um template mm -hmm. so i needed something I needed an overhaul and I got it. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just so grateful. I'm so blessed to have the mentors and the people in my life that, that showed up at the exact time when I needed them to be there. <laughs> Cause I was lost. I, you know, when I got out of the meadows, I was like, help, like now I have all this information. What do I do with it? And how do I heal? And it was like doing open heart surgery. And then they staple your chest back up and put you on the plane and go "How Good luck to you. You know, <laughs> Um, it's it like doing <laughs> two months worth of therapy in about a week, you know, wow. and you're like, ah. 
So, but, and that was yeah. actually my next question is that, um, because again, for all these people who are also going through things who, you know, their challenges and they're trying to work within, um, were you able to, I mean, you seem to talk about, you know, um, mentors and what part of you, uh, what percentage would say would be about you just going within and dealing with your, your own stuff and how much help was really, um, there for you and would you what would you recommend to people who are going through a journey like that of just going within and dealing with all this you know is it doing it alone is it getting some help is it you know what will be your kind of yeah. experience I don't know that I could have dealt with my shame core by myself although I needed that that external um that because I can't that's the thing about the nature of shame is that it stays hidden so you can't see it. It wants to just hide behind the shadows and then jump out and then come back. And then you can identify it. You're like, you call it something else. You call it anxiety. You call it um, depression. We call it all these different things, but actually at the end of the day, it's what we, what we make things mean. And it comes down to, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not this, I'm not that, but that, but that. And it's just, it's all these opinions that we've created around when we don't succeed or when our humanness shows up or whatever. Right. So for me, I had the I had to do it. That but the the work had to come from me. That's God couldn't do it. This is a sovereign thing. This literally is the moment of like so you have all the self will that you've got to. Throw into. <laughs> That's the one time self will comes into hand where it's just like I've got to push through this. So every day felt like I was going to the mat with my shame core. Something would come up, a memory or whatever, and it almost felt like I was under psychic attack for about a year where um it, it's like it's like these frozen light codes like miasmic light codes in your etheric field and then suddenly it's like ding ding ding. it's like somebody just pushes the play button yeah on the pause button right and they just and now that's playing and this is playing and everything in the background and suddenly you're just like triggered all over the place and you're like i just want to kill myself i but i don't have any i don't have any suicide that's not in my code you know what i mean mm -hmm. i have a strong will to live yeah. So I knew it wasn't me when I heard that voice that said, oh, you should just kill yourself. Mm. I knew in the mo that moment that that was some entity. It was something outside of me that was saying that it wasn't coming from me. And yeah. in that moment, I was like, oh, I get the game now. I see what this is. Mm -hmm. So if I did, so they were, sh the, the, the end, they were shining light on things that were shaming and were difficult, but it were part, there were parts of myself that weren't integrated in my shadow. So they were just like, ah you know and hoping I would react and get scared or get angry right and then when I didn't and I pulled that in and looked at it and I was like oh shit this is this is me at five this is me at seven this is me at 12 you know like all, all of these parts of myself I hadn't integrated and I was just like oh I just <laughs> and pull, pulling that in and basically doing the reparenting process that was really what that was um for about, I don't know, like I said, a year. And I, and I had a therapist and, but all the therapy that I had done prior to that didn't do anything. It was just, I hate to say that, but not one therapist said, oh, you might be codependent. What does that even mean? You know, for me, it was, um, it, it was a, it was a level of immaturity to the, the age that you are now. In other words, you did not get, for whatever reason, zero to 17, you didn't get everything that you needed to be a fully functioning adult at 18. That's what that means. So by the, I had the template that I got at zero to seven was my template for relationships, starting with the relationship with myself. <laughs> so that's what I learned in the meadows. And then when, when I got out, it was like, okay, this isn't true. That's not true. So I got to learn who I am now. I had to do that. It wasn't going to come from um, a therapist, unfortunately, but she was just able to ask me the questions I didn't want to answer or be able to kind of work with the, uh, the parenting process and show me my mentor to uh, Michelle. And so uh, that I ha I needed help with. Yeah. Was the parenting part. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to be a, I didn't want to be a mom. You know, I, that was the thing. <laughs> and now I'm parenting like seven people in me. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it was just kind of ironic. But yeah. Anyway, I don't yeah, know we... if that made Sense, yeah, I, completely. I, I mean, completely. I, I yeah. totally resonate with it anyway. And I'm sure uh, tons of people out there would resonate if they're in that inner journey and just really going into their 
the I wouldn't say the stinky stuff, but you know what I mean, like where it hurts, where where it blocks, where it's you don't want to see it, and then you need to be that observer because if you don't become that observer and that parent, as well as being the inner child and being everything at the same time and parenting all these facets of yourself is just is, is just a, such a challenge. But again, it's a gift and it's a it's a treasure because at the end you come out of that like you just you're not the same person basically. I mean, it's just it's just. It's just uh, and and I know we're all struggling with that. And some people call it the dark night of the soul. Some call it depression. Some call it suicidal. You know, we all whatever name you put on it, it's it's always that mm-hmm. journey that inevitably we all have to go through. I mean, it's just it's just a question of time. You know, depending how long you want to wait before you do it, you have to go through it at some point in this life or the next. So might as well do it now. You know, and just get over it and get through it and and you know but it's it's super tough and you know some people don't come out of it you know and uh, it's wonderful how your experience is very inspiring in that way and i can see your strength and your self-confidence and um and perhaps that was not something that was part of your of yourself before but now i can really feel that 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 sovereignty within yourself that really you know is is just quite impressive and very inspiring so i think it's gonna it's gonna help a lot of people out there also and the, the fact that you're so authentic it's real uh you you talk about this uh very openly i i honor that it's something i, I find very important that we're able to put ourselves out, out there vulnerable and say well this is what i went through and then all these people are going to be like oh my god okay so i'm not the only one you know going through this hell and you know it's this is why I want to do these interviews because we're we're such in need of you know we have to do the work ourselves, but just seeing other people, what they're doing, what their tips, what their struggles, I think it's really crucial to feel that we're all one in this and that we're all you know we're all trying to travel on the on our journey on our inner journey. So thank you so much for sharing that with us so candidly. <laughs> I would just I would just say it's worth it. Yeah, it is worth it. Every yeah. every tear every every moment of whatever if you can if you can transmute that and bring it into the light you know because most of my power i've realized was in my shadow the power it wasn't all bad it wasn't like it was the things that i was hiding from myself the the Mm -hmm. things i thought would not be acceptable in relationships or in my family or whatever in life I, i i wasn't allowed to have so i just shoved that to the back but unfortunately i also put my power in in the things that made me who i was And it's so, and so integrating the shadow back into the light, this this is, this is the journey. This is what we're here to do. Um, So if that's all I did, maybe that's it right there. The mission, you know, doing that, that intergenerational trauma work, you know, like I, it's, it's paying it forward and backwards, both. I mean, just that is like, wow. (laughs) You know, that, that could be it right there that we, we are literally changing the template as we, as we go, you know, for humanity. Because I didn't, I thought I was doing it for myself, just so I could, you know, have a better relationship with myself and my family and people around me. Oh, it was, it goes so far beyond that. <laughs> and uh, we don't, we have no idea how how important like one person making that shift can be for the, just the people around them in their neighborhood. You you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is this is the the invisible part. We think we got to be doing something, you know, and it is doing something, but. It's just not something you see, something you feel. And since we're all like kind of linked in a way energetically, I mean, what you do will definitely have a, a ripple effect on everything around you and everybody, everyone around you. I think what you're saying about the shadow work is absolutely crucial because there's a lot of people who tend to think that the shadow is like, oh, I don't want to go there. It's stinky. I, you know, and then an- another problem that arises, obviously, is that that thing is just controlling your life completely, you know, and recently I've been through going that as well. So, I mean, we're all, we're all struggling with that, but integrating it rather than just pushing it away is definitely uh you know important work to do and you've definitely done that so that's 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 amazing continue to do that it's never done yeah yeah it's a it's <laughs> the constant journey forever but i mean you know yeah. at least it's you're not you don't feel like you're completely you know overwhelmed by it it's, it's just kind of a relationship between your shadow and your light in some way so yeah so i guess we're kind of getting to the towards the end of this interview is there a few words you would like to you know leave us with or some tips or things you'd like to share with us to mm. help or to no I mean we we kind of covered quite a bit um mm-hmm. I just wanted to come on, kind of come on and just do more of a candid um yeah. because I I really appreciated your interview with like the other Leva and I think there was yeah I, I've 
it's nice to get to know each other in, in this way because we can slow it down a little bit. And, um, and then when we do meet, hopefully we do at some point, um, we're not strangers, you know what I mean? We kind yeah. of know each other a little bit better. Um, yeah, if you're feeling like you're just kind of out there on your own and alone, I've, I've been feeling quite a bit like that recently. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, I hate to sound so redundant, but it, it is that thing of going within and, and connecting to yourself first, connecting to your, your higher self or whatever, and realize that you're never alone. <laughs> <laughs> and ask for guidance, ask for protection, ask for whatever you need. I mean, everything, that's what I realized when I left Colorado, I had everything I needed within. It wasn't coming from outside. So whatever I needed would manifest. It was going to, it was going to be there. And it was, and yet still my human side has trust issues and I, and I don't believe it. <laughs> it makes no yeah. sense. Like, well, where, where's the money? Where's this? Where's that? With that, with that? And it's like, be patient. You know, be patient with yourself, be patient with the process because you don't, how things line up is not up to me, but, but, you know, manifesting, I can see it. Um, I don't know if this makes any sense, but I, yeah, the, the, the community, you know, I'm trying to build the community around me and, and create a, a frequency or vibration. I have to, I, I can't push the river, you know? So no. I, part of that is just allowing it to be what it is and, go where it's already built, you know, galactic chicks. That's one, you know, uh, going to this conference in October. Um, so you're, you're going to be at J6, which is the uh, yes, is the galactic I'm spiritual so and commerce connection. To they're going to be there. Yay. <laughs> it's going to be a to pleasure. It. Yeah. To see. You're going to be there too. I think, I'm going to be yeah. there too. And yeah. I'm also part of the galactic chicks, which is also beautiful. Uh, these beautiful uh, groups that were created by our friend, uh, Disco Tina, who's uh, someone who's trying to bring and connect people together. So the beautiful, uh, if you want to have more information about, about this, you can always um, send me a, a comment or something under the video. We can give you links, a uh, beautiful community of people who have, uh, you know, or either on the spiritual journey and or also on the, you know, contact about, you know, star seeds and things like that. So it's it's a nice place where we can uh, come together and ex express our, you know, share our experiences and, and have support. So it's beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah. community. And the Galactic, uh, the J JASIC uh, event in October in Orlando is going to be amazing as well. Lots of speakers there that have a lot of uh, experiences like yourself, very, uh, very, you know, powerful experiences that are going to be really interesting to to listen to. So I really look forward to meet you there and uh, yes. stay connected in the Galactic Chick groups. And I want to thank you immensely for bringing your um you know, your experiences, your inner journey, your, your uh, being so candid and authentic about what you've been through. It's I think it's going to be really inspiring to a lot of people. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. It's an um, honor to have you on the channel. And uh, I wish you a good continuation in your new life in Florida and everything you're trying to bring in, into your life and also around you in the in the high five frequencies. So good luck with that. And thank you. For thank you. Thank you for being uh, all that you are and all that you do. <laughs> Thank you. So take great care of yourself and we'll talk soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Hello, beautiful soul. You have been on a spiritual journey for some time, or perhaps you're just starting your inner journey. Uh, and you probably have questions uh, that remain unanswered right now, although all your answers lie within yourself, as always. Uh, but sometimes we need someone to just give us a little nudge. And uh, personally, as an intuitive and a transmitter and a creator, I have uh, created my own type of approach where I offer the people the opportunity to ask um, a few questions, a maximum of five questions, where they uh, I will provide from my inner guidance, which is the fractal of source that I am and that you are as well, uh, as well as my high vibration guidance, will provide a vocal transmission. Uh, and also we, we will be creating a an artwork just for you, um, unique and original, uh, based on your questions and the motifs and the colors that will be chosen uh, for the artwork will will have uh, in some ways some um, information about uh, your the answers to your question. And I will also use uh, a piece of music that either through the frequency of its melody of its words will also have give you some clues as to um, 
uh, what the answers to your questions might be. And I only serve as a nudge, as a pointer, in order for you to, after that, uh, um, resonate or not with this information and then you can pursue your own uh, spiritual and inner journey uh, just uh, having been just to help a little bit on the path so if you're interested in a creative intuitive transmission session which i call cit uh, i invite you to uh, follow the link that's uh, below uh, in the description of this video and on my website abigailrichard.com slash cit and don't hesitate to ask for more information or just uh, book a session. Have a lovely day. Bye.